Hey everybody, we're back here with our fourth and final video on the new assessment questions available in Schoology. Um, so I've got my information here, I'm ready to create it, and we're going to take a look at which question types are going to be added in on this one. Today we're going to take a look at the following three question types, the label image question, the uh, number line question, and then finally the chart question. We're going to come back to math short answer at another point in time. Um, I've noticed some issues with it while, while working in it, um, so I don't want to jump the gun on that one too quickly. Um, so let's go ahead and do a label image question. So we're going to click on it on the left hand side, and then let it load up the interface. Okay, so what I'm going to do once I have the image loaded in is I'm going to hit this response box button and you'll see it pop in here and what I can do is I can cover up a section of the image and this is where students are going to drop their uh, responses so if I cover up nucleus down here and we'll, we'll I'll show you some other options for how we can set this up um, but we're gonna add in nucleus and then I'm also gonna add in um, another response box for cytoplasm. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and leave it like that. Then we have to set up the correct response, so we have to put these into the right place. This is um, showing Schoology what, what you want the response to be. And we're gonna give it 100%. We could add in alternate options here if we wanted to. Um, scoring type scoring type we can do exact match or partial match so if they got one of them right and the other one wrong it could give them 50 percent credit um, but let, let's go ahead and leave that like this so down here we can change the way that those boxes show up so right now the responses are set to a width of 100 pixels and a height of 30 pixels um, we can change we can add a, a pointer to these See how it puts a little dot in? So if I wanted to move this, I could come back up here and move that over the nucleus. Now this one, obviously, we have the labels, so that kind of messes with that option. Um, but that, that's something that you could do. Uh, we can also do from the sides. So if I put the label to the right, now I can move this pointer where I need to. Um, just you know, another way of, of being able to set that up. If you had a, a diagram that didn't have any text on it, uh, this would be a lot, a lot different. Um, but we're going to go ahead and leave it like this. I understand that you can see the responses, but just a different way of, of looking at it. And once we have it set up the way we want, we can preview it. And I have to drag and drop those responses in. I'll get the little confirmation in the top right-hand corner that it's correct. If I like the way it's set up, we can go ahead and save it. So now that we have our label image question in, we're going to take a look at the number line next. And this one could be used in, um, in math for sure, but also as a, a timeline option. So you can enter text in or you can enter numbers. Um, so there's a, some different, different ways you could use it. We're going to go ahead and set up the question type. Um, so I'm going to have them label or, or add four numbers to this number line. Um, you can see my minimum value is negative 10, my maximum value is 10. Um, so let's go ahead and add the question in. Okay, my possible responses. So I could add more in here if I wanted to. I could change my minimum and maximum values. Um, but once we've got that set, we can come down here and set the correct, uh, correct responses, correct response threshold. So if I put this on 2, that's going to be correct. If I change that, anything within one unit or two units could be counted as correct. So if I put it at 3, um, it would be scored correctly for the student. Um, but let's go ahead and look at these additional setup options. So here's the show tick. So this is going to show each one of those lines. If I turn it off, you'll see them go away. Um, snap to ticks is going to try and put that right on the mark. So if I remove snap to ticks, it's not going to try and, and enter that information right along that line. Um, tick distance is set to 1. If I change that to 0.5, it does add it in, but you'll notice that we start getting some weird um, formatting. 
And then fractions format, um, I can change the way, you know, if I want it to be normalized in mixed fractions or improper fractions, um, you know, we can, we can add those in over there. Um, so that's going to change the way that that line looks as well. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have show ticks on uh, our tick distance. We're going to set to one. We could add labels, we can add arrows, um, but let's go ahead and leave the rest of that the way that it is. And then we need to enter our correct responses. I'm going to turn off snap to ticks, so that way our, our point fives can, can fit in there correctly. Um, so we'll go two, negative four, 5.5, and, oh, 5.5 and negative 5, a 9.5. Okay, and then we can save that. Okay, and our final question is going to be a chart. So we're going to enter some information into here um, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so I've set up my question here. I've got the, the statement at the top and I'm going to label these three grades, first grade, second grade, third grade. Um, if I set the value over here, it's going to change uh, what the graph looks like. Um, so we don't need to do anything on this one. We're going to leave all of those set right now at zero. When we come down here, we have to set up what the correct answer is. So first grade uh, should be at 15, and you'll notice how it snaps kind of to those in-between markers. Uh, second grade should be at 25 and third grade should be at five. Okay, so we've created our correct responses. Down here, the correct response threshold, so that's again where you could say, all right, the correct answer is 15, but if they get 14 or 16, I'm gonna count it correctly. Um, we can come down here to chart type and we can change which type we want. Snap to points, again, that's, that's what we showed earlier where it snaps to those um, kind of markers, those uh, invisible lines between um, 14 and 16. And then I can display, I can choose to display the grid lines or not display them. Um, we're going to leave that as it is. If you wanted students to be able to add their own data points, that would be in this user control section. So they would be able to come in and add um, a fourth grade option. Um, but that's, that's something we're not going to do on this one. Um, just know that if you if you want students to be able to add their own, that's going to come in that user control. Um, learning objectives, we're going to leave blank for now, but it is available for this question. So let's go ahead and preview. All right, so I've given the students some sort of data, uh, maybe on a piece of paper that they're going to use to uh, create this graph with. Um, second grade is going to be 25, and third grade is 5. And once I get that correct, it should show me right here that I've got 100%. Okay, let's go ahead and save it, and then we'll jump over and see what it looks like from the student view. Okay, so here I am in the student account, uh, and this is our first one, the, the label image. Um, so that's a drag and drop. I can drag these uh, text options down here at the bottom and drop them into those boxes. We've got our number line, okay, so we can, anywhere on this line, it's going to let me drop it, remember, because we turned that uh, snap to ticks off, uh, and we'll see what that does for grading here in just a couple of minutes. So I've entered my responses there, we can go to the next one. Create a bar graph to show how many students were absent. So we're going to go 15, second grade 25, and third grade 5. We're going to review it. Any of the questions that I want to go back to, I could. Remember, we've got the option to flag those questions over here on the side. Um, so let's go ahead and submit it. Then we'll jump over and see from the teacher account. So I see this middle school test student. Um, and now it's showing that the status is complete. So I can go ahead and click on that and we'll take a look and see. So it's trying to grade uh, along this number line, but you'll notice that, that my responses are extremely close 
to where these are. Um, so because of that, I need to come back in and regrade this one. Um, that student obviously deserves full credit. They have everything lined up properly. Uh, it's just noticing that there's a, a small difference between the location of those. Um, and that's something that we could change in the grading if we if we play with that threshold a little bit. We might be able to set it to like a 0.5 where anything within half um, is going to give it, uh, give it credit for that. And then here's my bar graph. And I see that the student has uh, full credit, had the correct response on that one. Um, so that covers all of the questions in the new Schoology assessments. If you have any questions about how to use them or how to create them, uh, please let myself or BJ know. Obviously, we'd be more than happy to help. Thanks.